Turf Nerd says, a lot say slow release in heat, but is that possible? It is, or is it possible it kicks in at a point where it might not need ideal as it might not be ideal as you can't control that? I think I think there's some typos or something in there, but I think what I'm what I'm reading from that question, Turf Nerd, is use a slow release in heat, but at some point is it going to get too hot and start releasing everything, and and that might not be the most suitable source or whatever the case is for you. I suppose it's possible. The, 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 on when, again, on Wednesday night, we're going to be doing it uh, applications year round in Florida, where it's 85, 90 degrees the entire summer and raining like heck. Okay, so we're going to see what happens with these slow release nitrogen sources when it's hot and when it's wet in Florida. And um, I'll just say that it's possible that if it, you know, if somehow it gets hot and you have too much down it's, I suppose it's possible you could have a flush of growth if that's what you're hinting at there turf nerd it's going to depend on the nitrogen source the rate turf grass the location where you're at but I would say I wouldn't worry about it a whole lot I, I, we just haven't seen that happen a whole lot if you're going to have that flush of growth the question would be would it occur as a result of the nitrogen source the slowest nitrogen source compared to the soluble nitrogen source, right? The, 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 the benefits of these slow-release nitrogen sources, at least in my opinion, are, are few and far between. But let me, let me just, and I'm, I'm going to get into them eventually. But generally speaking, the benefit is you're reducing, it's, it, they provide a buffer, basically. You're reducing some potential risk in a variety of areas. So the risk of environmental contamination is lower using slow release but i would say <clears throat> the risk of environmental contamination is pretty low using soluble as long as you know what you're doing i use this analogy the other night where if i'm going to go hunting with somebody I, I grew up shooting firearms my entire life okay and when i go out with someone who's never let's say let's say i go out with my my son who's never held a weapon in his life do i want to hand him a 280 rifle, you know, or do I want to hand him a BB gun when he first starts to learn? They both do the same thing. They both fire a projectile. But the risk involved with the BB gun is quite, or the, the chances of, of causing harm with a BB gun is quite low compared to a 280. You make a mistake with a 280, you could kill somebody. Make a mistake with a BB gun, <clears throat> it's very unlikely. And I use that analogy to say, if you know what you're doing with nitrogen sources, you can put them out no problem. Okay. But I don't know if I would necessarily put a, you know, 50 pound bag in an 80 pound spreader, push it of urea with someone who I, who I just hired and they have no clue how to spread fertilizer. Okay. I'd, I'd probably want to give them something a little safer, like a hundred percent sulfur coat, you know, or something that I know if they make a mistake, the risk is reduced. Right, I can at least vacuum up the prills if he dumps it in the middle of the yard, you know, before it kills the grass or something. You know, if he doesn't know how to open the hopper up as he's pushing it and close it before he stops it, and all these things. If you don't know what you're doing, I'd rather have you with a safer product than with a hot product. But if you know what you're doing, no problem. Right, so I think that's a value of slow release materials that um, that I would say is a good reason to include, especially with your newer employees who you don't have a lot of confidence in applying it correctly. The redu reduction in environmental contamination is very low with slow release. It's also slow with soluble. I don't want to, I don't want to say soluble is high. It's, 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 the potential is high if you don't know what you're doing. But in reality, if you know what you're doing, the risk is quite low with both. And then the risk of burn is quite low with slow release. If you have a slow release product like a mill organite, you have essentially no risk of burn at all. Now, would you believe me if I told you that I've put out 10 pounds of nitrogen from urea and ammonium sulfate and calcium nitrate, potassium nitrate, milorganite, polyon, you name it. 10 pounds of N, not product, 10 pounds of N and not burn the grass because I knew what I was doing and I applied the appropriate amount of water, I applied it at the right time of day, and so forth. So I get, what I'm saying is, 
you can you can result in tremendous amount of death in turf grass if you don't know what you're doing. With the same product, you can result in zero death of turf or burn if you know what you're doing. So I don't want to hammer on these slow release materials and say you shouldn't use them. There is value to them. But if you know what you're doing and you're looking for the most efficient product and the most efficient program, the, the paper yesterday clearly indicated that urea was at the top of the list and the natural organics were probably at the bottom of the list. <laughs> And the paper today said the same thing. The soluble nitrogen sources consistently resulted in the greatest amount of quality, resulted in a fair amount of longevity for that quality. And the other products, whenever you blended it with it, the quality was reduced. The longevity might have been extended a little bit with some of the slow releases. But clearly, if you're doing 100% slow release with the natural organics and some of the sulfur coats, um, they didn't compare at all favorably with straight urea. In general, those paper, the paper yesterday and the paper today clearly indicate that you should stick, you should put a lot of confidence and a lot of your programs should be weighted on uh, urea. And if you're going to move away from that, just have a good reason. So Matt says they have products that last all season are very affordable. You will throw down about 10 pounds per thousand. The mix has different release times. But I will say that I, I, it, it's going to be a little difficult for me to find a paper on that. Like, could you actually apply it and just last the entire season? I, I've personally done that in business before. When I was in the industry, I've done that on golf before it, it, it is possible i've done that in research before and where you put one out and it lasts the entire season and um so but it's anecdotal i haven't published it I, I will say that there is a fine line between getting enough on the ground to see a turf response and getting too much on the ground that results in environmental risk i.e nitrogen leaching you will leach the heck out of nitrogen if you put out the wrong rate with the wrong coated material at the wrong time. And I fine-tuned that down in Fort Lauderdale where if you're putting out one pound, two pounds, five pounds, or ten pounds of nitrogen with these polymer coats, you'll eventually find the right combination of this is the turf response I want. Any, and if you put out any more, you're going to get a tremendous amount of leaching. But at that line, I didn't, I didn't see much leaching at all from this heavily coated high rate application of polymer coat it is possible to do uh, i just don't know if it's financially comparable to you know another soluble or sulfur coated application or whatever you want to do I, I haven't ran the cost on that so i wouldn't i'm almost certain there's no there's no data on the cost of that sort of program relative to a cost of putting out urea two or three times a year or whatever or sulfur coated two or three times a year